Hello, welcome back to the next part of our Cubase Pro 9 kind of overview. In the first part, we looked at uh, just the general kind of features, the new stuff that you'd expect came out in December. You've been using Cubase for a long time, right? Yeah, well, I thought it was 25 years. I realized it's actually 26 years. So wow. Yeah, Okay. long time. Um, anyway, we looked at some of the features, the workflows, markers, some very interesting stuff that I thoroughly recommend you check that out. Uh, and this time we're going to take a look at what? The new sample track, right? Yeah, we alluded to this in the last episode as the sexy feature of Cubase 9. And in many ways, I think that's quite good because it's it's a little bit of an unknown quantity. In, in the other features we were looking at, we were looking at sort of, you know, quality mastering EQs and things like that. The sample track, that's this is something actually conceptually a, a bit newer that we have to sort of try and work out how to use because it doesn't necessarily have a precedent. Really. Right, OK. Yeah. So let's have a look on the screen here. So I've got a project here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little plus sign here, which is a little add track. And I'm going to add here. Now we've got on our add track list, we've got our add sample track. So let's add a sample track. Um, let's just add it here. What I'll do is invisibility. I'm going to just only have our sample track showing. OK, which will just solo that. So, so now we're just only looking at the sample track. And the sample track is currently empty. But to get you going, uh, Steinberg have included uh, a bank of samples under the name of Kaleidoscope. And we're going to open them here. From this side bit, this browser here is a, a way to do it. So if we look in loops and samples, and then we find this colourful icon here, Kaleidoscope. And if we look into here, this is like a list of, well, it's like a long list of samples that may be useful for. And we could audition some if we flick through some of these. Just incidentally, in these little icons down the bottom here, um, we can actually align the beats to the project so you could listen to samples at, the pro at your project tempo. So these are all just sort of like stereo samples. So these are, yeah. Whoa! <laughs> That sounded a bit like, well, they sound meaty. They are very, definitely meaty samples. Um, so let's have a look. There's some quite nice ones down here. So oh, that's quite nice. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, that's omen-like. So yeah, yeah, a lot of stuff. So what do we do with these samples? So we so drag it in. Drag it in. And now, if you've got a MIDI keyboard plugged in, you know, we've got them. So that's just literally mapped it across the keyboard and that's your lot. There's no, I mean, I noticed we've got a mapping here, but there's no, it's not, there's no key groups or key zones. It's just a strip. No, with the sample track, it is just a single sample. So there's right. no way of doing multi, uh, you know, multi samples or round robin or velocity layers or anything like that. It's from just- From within one track. From within one track. Right. Um, I think the reason for that is that it's meant to be just almost like an instantaneous way of just instantly grabbing a piece of audio, dropping it in, and it's, and it's kind of ready. So what can we do with the sample? Right, well, what we've got, we've got, we've got three envelopes. We've got a pitch envelope, uh, a filter envelope, and an amp amplitude envelope. Right. That changes the display from the waveform display All right, so to an envelope. Draw. Right, so we could do, or we could do that with amplitude. So we've got a bit of manipulation going on there. Yeah, uh, one thing you should mention is that these curves are oh, they nice and bezier. Bezier curves. So you can go yeah. linear, exponential, all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. But what you notice is that it is fairly simple. It's quite rudimentary. It, yeah. It's just, as I say, just to kind of just act as an immediate way. One thing that is really cool is, though, that you can enable audio warp. And we'll look at this in a moment in more detail. But audio warp, and it, enabling audio warp means that the samples will play back. Uh, so if you've got a backing vocal phrase, they will all sing in time. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. And yeah, all the samples will play back at the same rate. Uh, so, OK. So turn back on all the tracks, show all tracks here. And now we've got a bunch of stuff that we've kind of pre-prepared. But um, so first thing, we have brought in a drum loop. Just uh, we've used the production grooves, which we got from this side panel here. And we found a loop and the loop sounds like this. OK, so we, yeah, we went for something fairly basic and atmospheric. That's right. And now we then grabbed a vocal from another song. Play there. Okay. Okay. So, right. And then um, up the top here, we've mm -hmm. just got this kind of 
old recording of some uh, classical piece, right? Yeah, it's an old Bartok tune, and um, it's a it's got a nice kind of crusty sound to it. So we we picked up a few bits of Bartok uh, uh, samples here, and we just sort of grabbed a few. Yeah. Little clips and so let's see what we've got. So. Um, <laughs> It's fairly kind of uh, experimental. So what you do, as I mentioned earlier, you create a track, add a sample track, and then just drag. But in, in this case, we can just drag from rather than from the from browser, the, the right. browser, we can do it straight from the uh, from the arranger screen. And this is probably where a lot of the action, I think, with the sample track will happen. But I would yeah, say I'll drop that one in there just out of. Right, so yeah. we've got that. Easy enough. Um, okay, so the vocal then, let's, uh, yeah, let's let's pop that vocal then onto its own sample track. And uh, let's drop it in there. Okay, so. So yeah, it's pitching, it's, it's speeding it's up. It's speeding up, it's speeding up. If I now enable this audio warp, it plays them all at the same time. So if I play high one, and a low one. So we get that kind of, yeah. Yeah. If you choose in the mode though to solo, it opens up this other control, which is a formant control. You can hear those kind of great. Okay, so, but this is all, I mean, bear in mind, this is all from basically a clip that we've grabbed from the timeline, so. Yeah. <laughs> So we've got another track here where we've done a little bit of kind of uh, finagling and reversing and what have you. Yeah, with the sa using the same sample. Okay. Okay. So let's... Uh... And then on this track, we put uh, one of the Bartok things, didn't yeah, we? So we've got listen. this little... And we reverse that as we'll well. Reverse, so yeah. And then we start putting this together. Hit the beat! A nice little vibe. <laughs> so then, presumably, can we then play those vocal that vocal line yeah. underneath? So is that E? That was it. Oh, it's got sort of David Lynch sort of vibe to it, isn't it? Record that. I like it. And it's a five bar loop, kids. I don't get that very often, do you? <laughs> so odd. So, I mean, is that it though? I mean, is that all the manipulation that we can actually do of that sample track or is there some more stuff that can happen? Well, there's various ways of controlling the, the loop mode. Um, we can fix the pitch, we can reverse, different things like that. We can hit the transfer to new instrument button. Right. And that's a pretty cool thing. I hit that, it gives me the option then, I mean, I've got Groove Agent installed and Halion installed, but you know, you'll have Groove Agent SE. So it'll take the kind of, the basic settings of that sample yeah, and build a And sample. bring it into your more fully featured sampler. Right. So, um, you know, so like your Groove Agent, your 16 pad type thing, right. you can load it in, you can load your samples in and, and populate a different Groove Agent. Uh, but also what's pretty cool, which features a, a new element that's in Cubase 9, is um, VST instruments, they have to be VST3, right. can enable a sidechain input into an instrument. Right, so it enables an external input, okay. Which in this case is pretty cool because you, you notice that one thing that the sample track doesn't really have is any... The modulation. No right modulation, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So we've actually got one set up already. I've got a Retrolog and Retrolog is the kind of flagship analog modeling synth that comes as part of Cubase and is excellent, really worth investigating if you haven't already. There's a new little icon and the new little icon up here, this one here. If you see this icon, it means that the instrument has the so, sidechain. Right. So if we enable that now, um, what that is, does is it, it it becomes an, an a destination. A destination, oh, right, okay. yeah. So if we go to our, uh, let's go to this little track here that we're playing. And what I'm going to do here is, if I just come up and go here, we can see in my choice of destinations, 
we can see that Retrolog is now available. Yeah. So we choose the Retrolog, and that's pretty cool because it means that it's feet, it's now going into Retrolog. Right. Um, what we do have to make sure we do though is trigger a note. Cause trigger a note. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's certainly in Retrolog anyway. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, so, uh, so now what's going to happen? So I'm using here from so Retrolog. The there's a square wave tempo synced. That's right. I've got the oscillators turned off. So, right, the, so we're just hearing the We're only input. hearing the input. Okay. So, I mean, I was looking at the sample track. Presumably you could create multiple sample tracks. Yes. And have different samples triggered on different notes and then turn them all into records. So you could sort of make a multi-sample That's setup, the right? way to do it. And the way you would do that then, I suppose, is uh, if we look at a sample track, for instance, this one, we can see that they're running along the bottom, the keys, and we can just basically choose the key range that we want that sample and then to, in the to next cover. one you could change it. Yeah, and then you and then basically by having lots of uh, tracks armed, you could, could you, make okay. so. I, and there's no limit to sample tracks, so you could have 88 sample tracks. It's a long way around to doing. Yeah, stuff. I mean you're better off probably using an actual sampler if you're going to. Do I think it. it's, when it comes. But to I that. think the thing that we found when we were preparing this is the immediacy of going. Oh, that's a nice bit. You drag it onto the sample. It's a yeah. little bit. It's not quite as smooth as perhaps it could be. You have I'd like to be able to grab a piece of audio and just drop it onto the sample track. But you can't. You have to drop. You it have in. to drop it into the thing, which is fine. But you know. It's... And the other thing we notice is. If you wanted to swap the sample out, you can't just drag another sample in, or we couldn't find a way to do it. Um, it seems to sort of not let you. Once you've done it, yeah. So yeah. it's a little, I mean, it's, it needs a bit of finesse, perhaps. But, yes, but perhaps early days with it. However, the, the idea of this sampler built in at the sort of track level, at the arrangement level, is really interesting. And, like and I guess, obviously, I mean, the thing about now is certainly with vocal production, yeah. a lot of the major hooks of a lot of uh, sort of modern pop production is a kind of cut up and transform sample. Right, yeah. So, you know, you could take your uh, your sample, yeah. you could stretch out and do the active audio and change yeah. the notes, sample it, and then put it into your sample track and then, you know, play it and re-trigger it and do all of that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. Which is, it's kind of very now, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It tracks that's... a bit faster than this, usually, <laughs> I would imagine. But... <laughs> a bit more commercial. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I can't imagine the kids getting down to this one, but you never know. I mean, at the moment, I'm still kind of scratching my head a little bit about the applications of the sample track, because as I say, it's a fairly new thing to, well, it's a new thing, but the, the, the idea of it, I'm sure that being as it's built in and it is so fundamentally part of the software, that we'll probably start to rely on it more and more until, you know, you really... Yeah, yeah, couldn't yeah. work without it. I'm, I'm, I'm imagining that's going to be the case with me. Uh, so yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm loving it so far, and I do think the sound is really good. I think that's something about it. I'm not quite sure why. I think the algorithms that they use in the audio warp certainly is, is, is sounds really cool, and you know, just turning anything into a playable instrument sort of instantly. It's almost got a Casio SK-1 quality about right. it. <laughs> so it's the instant. Yeah. Well, OK, I hope you've been enjoying yeah. that. Uh, that was the sample track. Uh, don't forget, there's another episode where we went through the other features of Cubase 9. Yes. Uh, which is available now. Yeah. And uh, you, there are details about the upgrade path and what have you. I think it yes. starts about 80 quid if you're at two. If you're going from, eight, if you're going from Cubase 8.5, it's about 80 pounds. And then I think from Cubase 8, I think it's 160. Well, if you're or buying it, it's about 480. 468, 468 pounds, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's it. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed that. We're gonna now put this track together and play you out with our beautiful creation. Oh, all right. Hey.